3D Rising is in Middletown at Middletown High School in downstate New York where we just watched the New York State Class A Championship. Victor won this one by a score of 7-5 to five in a classic battle over Ward Melville off of Long Island. We're talking to Victor, Victor head coach Jim Andre. Coach, uh, congrats on the win. Thank you, Casey. Absolute classic battle. Just take us through the preparation for this game and how it unfolded for you on the field. First big shout to 3D Rising. You guys rock and how you're growing the game. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, we looked at, we looked at um, Ward Melville's defense and how do you plan for a team like that? You got great athletes and you got great athletes that know how to play. Their slide package was incredible. We dodge, we have everybody right there. You know, who do you pick on? I mean, no matter who you try and dodge, you got the day kid sliding fast, coming hard. So we had to make sure that, you know, we not only did a great job dodging, but we had to move the ball. And then as soon as we had that figured out, they'd switch to a zone, then we'd have to change. I think it was just, just a classic upstate versus downstate chess match in lacrosse and uh, exciting for those that were here. You, they got out to, I think, a 3 nothing lead and then a 4-1 lead. How did you weather that? What did you say to the guys? And how did you eventually chip away and come back and take you know, the lead? For us, we don't even take it one goal at a time. We take it one possession at a time. We talk about learning from each possession. You know, when you go to a game and you go to a practice, you want to learn and get better. But when you're in a game like this, you got to break down each possession. What are we going to do this possession to make us better? What mistake did we make in our last possession so we can end that possession with a goal? And I think my kids figured out the answers as the game went on. Uh, offensively, uh, as the game went on, you finally started to find a rhythm, like you said. Uh, just talk about what was happening there and who the, who the guys were that sort of helped put that into you motion. Know, even, in the, even in the game, or even early in the game, I really saw us making the right reads, but unfortunately, we were passing defeat. We were overthrowing guys. We were throwing opposite their stick. And we just had to dial the guys in and say, look it, we're spending an awful lot of energy figuring out what to do. Now, gosh darn it, we can't throw away our basic skills because you still got to get the ball to the guy's stick. Uh, T.D. Erlen, obviously a, an enormous game for him. I think a lot of people look at this matchup and say, okay, downstate, uh, upstate, Long Island's got this one just on the faceoffs alone. I have to admit, I'm blown away by how well he played today, going against another kid going D1. Just talk about him and how important he was in this game. You know, T.D. did a great job of not only clamping and spinning, but he did a great job of diversifying his game. As you notice, he really brought his wings into play today. And he talked about that. You know, T.D., he coaches the faceoff. He really does. He's my leader out there. And uh, what he says goes. You know, we'll bring him off to the sideline. T.D., what are you seeing? What do you need? And really, it went from just him. You saw in previous games, he'd clamp it, fast break it. Today, that didn't really happen. He really had to bring his wings into play. And I thought he did a great uh, game time adjustment doing that. Talk about managing the emotion of this. You know, it's a, you're, you're playing a Class A team that's won who knows how many state championships. You guys have won. People are still sort of saying, okay, you know, who is this team? What are they really made of? You move up to A, you come down here, it's a whole other ball game, and you pull it off. I mean, just talk about managing that from the sideline. You know, for us, we talk about evolving as a program. Because right now, a lot of teams can win a championship, but then all of a sudden they kind of fade away. You know, we want to be that team that evolves into, you know, a perennial contender. You know, we're working hard at the modified level, we're working hard at the JV level and the varsity because we know that, you know, to be successful one year, that's great, it's an accomplishment, but what can we do as a town, as a program, to try and be there each year? And we still have some work to do to do that. Uh, I saw you talking with the Ward Melvo coach afterward. Um, I'm sure that you have a great amount of respect for that program. Just talk about, you know, what it, I guess how it feels to beat a team like that and then come over and have the coach say nice things to you about your program. Well, one thing we agreed upon, we looked at each other and we said, you know what, this shouldn't be a, a, a once once a, a, a once a lifetime thing. I said, I think we got to get on each other's schedule. He goes, I think that's a great idea. So I think that what this has to do is we got to start crossing over some upstate and some downstate games. There's a lot of great lacrosse upstate. There's a lot of great lacrosse downstate. You know, let's meet in the middle. Let's host. We'll host. They'll host. We'll travel. Um, we need to start playing those guys in lacrosse, and I think it'll help us both get better. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, Coach, you know, we talked about player development the other night. What did you see today in the game? Maybe it was not necessarily X's and O's or skill level. Maybe it was more character that tells you that you're doing the right things at practice and in the program's culture uh, to develop these guys the right way to be winners. Good lacrosse players listen to their coach and do what he says. Great lacrosse players can figure it out on their own and collaborate and work together with their coach to find the answers. My kids did that today. As they'd come off the field, they'd say, Coach, if we did this this formation, I think this will work. And then I would say, well, maybe we should change it and put this guy here. And I said, that's not like a plan, guys. The kid said, yeah, I think that's going to work. So I, I think great lacrosse teams collaborate between players and coaches. They work on those problems and problems solved together. And my kids did a great job of that today. Uh, a couple years ago, we're watching a team that's made up of sophomores. This, you know, this time around, we're looking at a team that has a lot of good seniors and a lot of good juniors, but you still have some sophomores contributing. A kid like Tanner Hay today, named the defensive MVP of the game. I mean, just speak to a kid like that, and, or, or a kid like that in his development. Uh, you know, to have him sort of come out of nowhere um, and play such a big game for you in such an important, an important time. You know, uh, this year our JV team went undefeated. The year before that, our JV team went undefeated. You know, uh, a lot of coaches value the varsity. I value my modified. My, my JV and my varsity because we want to build a program. I don't want to build a team, we want to build a program. 
And it just shows you when you emphasize the skills and you have common terminology and language between your modified JV and varsity, all of a sudden when those kids come up, it should be a smooth transition. People say, you know, he's a first year player. He shouldn't be. When he's a junior, he better be a fifth year player for me because that's how we run our system. Uh, I believe you're 44 and 0 now over the course of two years. You have a lot to be proud of. Um, I guess just talk about the emotion that you have as a coach to, to pull this off with a bunch of kids that I know you love a lot. You know, uh, this is my best day of coaching. It's my hardest day of coaching. I got, uh, you know, 18 plus seniors on this team that, you know, we built something together. And, you know, now they, 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 they leave the nest and they go, you know, go play lacrosse in other great places. You know, for us, so for me, it's, it's, it's bittersweet, it's exciting, I'm great for all we accomplished, but I think the hardest thing about being a varsity coach is uh, you got to say goodbye to your kids after that last game. In Modified, you get to watch them and stay with them. Uh, varsity, it's a little tougher. Well, Coach, thanks so much. Uh, it's been great watching you this year. We appreciate your time and hope you enjoy this win and the, the, the whole summer. And once again, 3D Rising, I appreciate all you guys do. You're growing the game, and uh, it's just outstanding. Thanks so much for all you do, you and Casey Bach. Thank you, Coach. All right.